Hey everyone, my name is Adriana and welcome to Guanabi, the place for Gwen Stefani fans. Today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the Hollaback Gwen doll. First, some background info. Gwen recorded her first solo album in New York City with Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo of The Neptunes. When it came to writing and producing a song, the trio worked exclusively. Throughout the recording of the album, Gwen was struck with a case of writer's block, which was emphasized in her song, What You Waiting For. Just when she felt she was done recording and she had given it her all, Pharrell beckoned her back into the studio. After he played her some tracks off of his own and also his first solo album, her creator's block finally lifted. Despite feeling that the album already had too many tracks, she went back into the studio to write one more song with Pharrell. Holla Back Girl was that song. Love Angel Music Baby was officially released in 2004 and Holla Back Girl was released as the album's third single in March 2005. It was one of the year's most popular songs and it hit the top 10 in the majority of the charts it entered. It reached number one in the US and Australia. In October 2005, Holla Back Girl was the first single to ever sell 1 million digital downloads, and that was within seven months of its release. Gwen felt that some No Doubt fans would be upset about her going solo. Commenting, they were probably like, why is she doing this record? She's gonna ruin everything. She admitted that she wasn't even sure why she was recording a solo album. Upon sharing her reflections with Pharrell, you know, they came to the conclusion that it's best for her to do whatever she feels is right and that she doesn't have to explain herself to anyone. Regarding the single, Gwen said that Hollaback Girl is the freshest attitude song I've heard in a while. The music video for the single received four nominations at the 2005 MTV Video Music Awards and ultimately it won for Best Choreography. The music video was directed by Paul Hunter and it was filmed in the Van Nuys and Reseda neighborhoods of Los Angeles. This item, as you can imagine, is quite the collectible. However, being that it was released in 2006, one would assume it's worth a lot more than what I paid for it. I think I paid about $30, which is really, really affordable. I mean, 2006, 14 years ago, 14 years ago, I would think this is of such a higher value. So what I'm going to be doing is, I guess I'll be reducing its value by taking it out of the box. You can tell it hasn't been opened. The doll is secured with wire, so it stays in place. So it hasn't been opened. Part of me feels like, oh, you know, it'll be nice to just leave it in the box. But how much fun would that be? <laughs> So we'll be taking a closer look at this doll. We'll be comparing it to the outfit Gwen wore in the music video. And we'll be seeing how accurate it is, what the quality is like, and uh, you know, perhaps what they could have done better. This is my first time unboxing something of this size. So I'm doing my best to give you guys a good view. I know this isn't it right now, but here we go. All right, so this is a poster. This is a brush put this somewhere you guys can see it. Now this is a pocket mirror. It's been a while since I had a doll. So next we have this hat, which I don't want to destroy. It's actually kind of sewn into place. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is kind of like a trucker style hat. Oh, and then these accessories. Let's get this out of the way. And this is an old school flip phone and a pair of sunglasses. All right, so I'm a little bothered by the fact that I can't like remove the thing that everything was tied to. So there's a trading card here. Let's see if we can just kind of take that out. That's that. And then here we have Gwen, obviously. I really don't want to cut anything. I shouldn't. So that's one arm that's free. And uh, you guys might not be able to see it from here, but her hair is actually secured by a piece of plastic. And here we are. Here is our Gwen doll. Getting impatient. I don't want to be like overly careful because I just want to like look at this thing already. But so here is our Hollaback. Gwen. Overall, the Hollaback Gwen doll is supposed to embody the Gwen that we see in the Hollaback Girl music video. 
the doll, like in and of itself, it does this really well. The outfit is almost identical. However, <laughs> I am someone who really likes precision and specificity, which is why we'll be comparing the doll itself to the music video. We're gonna be looking at what could have been refined. Some of the details in this analysis may be brief and others a bit more elaborate. Now, while I usually don't make it a point to scrutinize dolls, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing here today. Let's start with the first thing we see, the beanie on her head. The beanie is identical to the beanie in the music video. The color is spot on, style as well. However, I'm perplexed by the way the beanie has been attached to the doll's head. This is just a very unusual solution to the problem. Usually these plastic pieces are what you take off of items, like when you buy a new blouse or pants. They're the things you never want sticking around or sticking out of your clothes, but that's exactly what they're doing here. While they have a purpose, and while it is clever, if the color of these pieces was black itself, this could have been a much more well-executed result. The midriff, tank top style, and cut is in line with what we see in the video. However, if we really dig into the details, we'll see that it's not exactly correct. Allow me to first address the most obvious thing, which is how this doll shirt was either cut incorrectly or how this letter was applied a bit off center. This top portion of the outfit, the shirt, is what stands out most when I look at this doll and I'm disappointed someone in quality control let this one go. Next is the style of the letter. In the music video, Gwen's tank has two letters, one for each of her initials, G and S. They're decorated with what look like rhinestones and not just plain paint. The G on this doll's tank is simpler and it more closely resembles the G on her red outfit in this video. I feel that this was a good executive decision, especially since Gwen is known for her love of Old English, black and white, solid lettering, and this font type can be seen on tank tops she wore back in the 90s, as well as on the first handbags she ever designed when she collaborated with La Sport Sac back in 2003. The pants are on point, mostly, not including the fact that they're brown in color in the video. That's a rather unusual trouser color, which is why I agree that black was best in this case. The pants could have also been done, meaning sewn, a bit more considerably, primarily in this area. It saddens me to look at the doll from this angle. Boy oh boy. I like how the style of having boxers subtly showing is mimicked here. However, the fabric pattern doesn't line up. In the music video, Gwen is seen sporting solid white colored boxers, but I have to say that in this case, plaid is certainly the winner here. It's much more visually pleasing and it's clear that it was very intentional. The belt buckle style is mostly consistent, but there's one major thing that's different. On the doll, it says Gwen, but in the video, her belt buckle actually says bananas. This shit is bananas became such a catchphrase after this video was released and I think that this doll could have had a much higher value if those were the words used here. Here Gwen is rocking white low top sneakers. These complement the white tank wonderfully and I'm glad that they didn't go with what Gwen was wearing in the music video. Only because her footwear here is a bit more complex and could have overpowered other parts of this outfit. In the video she's rocking black and white high top sneakers. Now onto the accessories. This black trucker hat offends me simply because of how ugly it is and how poorly it's made. Gwen is seen wearing a hat in a video, but it's a baseball hat and it has a green and yellow heart reminiscent of designs seen in her Harajuku Lovers clothing line. This hat would be a lot more alluring if it was an actual replication of that. The absence of it is a little disappointing. She's not wearing sunglasses anywhere in the video, so these don't really have any appeal to me. Although, I can't lie that they look kind of cool in this position. The cell phone is an old school flip top phone before phones ever had the capacity for the intelligence they do now. I kept wondering about this accessory, you know? Gwen is literally never seen on the phone in this music video, not in a single scene. I kept thinking to myself, well, this is dumb and kind of pointless. I don't get it. 
Why did they include this? But then as I further reflected upon it, I suddenly remembered the name of the song and boy, did I feel stupid. <laughs> One is known for almost always having red nails. They are classy and timeless, and the fact that this element wasn't overlooked is wonderful. If you want to get super specific though, there are dark red in this video. However, <laughs> Gwen's been seen wearing various shades of red nail, so that's something I can easily overlook. She's got a bunch of jewelry on in the music video, and that would have been cool to have here. She's got various rings, bracelets, and necklaces. All of that is missing here. The mirror that's included is cute. Since dolls are typically made for kids and not adults, it makes sense that this isn't a traditional pocket mirror, but man, it would have been really cool if it was because then I could actually use it. The brush is cute, small, detailed, and I approve. The art on this poster is really pretty and I can appreciate it. I'll be honest though, the trading card feels a little silly. I feel like these things are only ever relevant when it comes to things like Pokemon, but I understand the desire to replicate that here. Oh, I just realized something. Oh my God. I just realized something. So I thought the shoes like can be taken off. I can even spin the foot. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. Oh my God. What the hell guys, come on. It's a little silly, isn't it? For those of you wondering, I am wearing a Gwen Stefani designed sweater. This is actually one of the most desirable sweaters in her lamb line. I'll find a picture of her wearing it that I can post here. It's made of cashmere. I've seen these priced at like $150 used. This one I got for 50, which was like a hell of a deal. I am wearing a black velvet top. So this is so much darker than this is, but I do like it. I think it's so pretty. It's got this cool hood which I'm not sure is really my look, but whatever. <laughs> for cold days, for windy days, it's perfect. Well, it's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing and the analysis and the background information. There is another Gwen Stefani doll that was released that imitates one of the outfits from the music video, Holla Back Girl, and I will be unboxing that soon. So stay tuned if you wanna check that out and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content about Gwen Stefani, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>